Hello, YouTube world. I'm back with another, I bought a stupid vehicle that I've never, ever thought I would own. You gotta focus on yourself, on your face. So, hopped on Facebook Marketplace. I was looking for a little bit of a beater vehicle to run around in and, uh, I found an LR3. They said the power steering pump was bad and that it would cost $3,000 for their mechanic to fix it. So they wanted to sell it for $1,500. So I took myself down with my buddy Nate down to Provo, Utah and took a look at the vehicle. We're driving in it right now. This is, of course, a few days later after buying the vehicle. So you know how this story goes. Anyway. They had it running when we showed up, no serpentine belt working at all, so it wasn't charging and wasn't cooling, and I'm like, hey, let's shut this off before we burn the vehicle up. So we turn it off, I see the serpentine belt is shredded, so I start uh, kind of carefully checking the uh, pulleys out on everything. The power steering pump spun freely, the AC spun freely, the alternator spun freely, freely and so did the water pump. So I figured, hmm, I don't think we have much of a problem here. If anything, we've got worn out tensioner. So I checked those really quick and an idler and they rolled, they turned over just fine. So I figured I'd take a chance and I offered them 750 bucks and walked away with a uh, driving discovery. Got a serpentine belt on it and a brand new battery. And I have now put 152 miles on this stupid thing already. It even came with a full tank of gas. I do have a couple issues I need to fix still. One, sorry, we have a leaking airbag on the front left axle and everything else works. We do have a brake light on for checking the brakes. We also have a check engine light, which I have not checked over yet, Probably. but Another great feature that they told us about is they had this thing, the engine totally replaced in this vehicle about a year ago. It doesn't make any weird noises, no rattling. Engine is very smooth and the transmission is very smooth as well. All right, here's our uh, warning lights, but it is running cool. There's our brake light warning. So to tell us the brake pads worn down, there's our check engine and our stability control light is on because this airbag it is leaking a bit. I really shouldn't be driving around, but it's there you can see the odometers showing 121,277 miles. Here's the stereo. We have a stock stereo with Harman Kardon. I don't even know how many speakers are in here. There is a subwoofer as well. We have dual climate zone, heated seats, front and rear. We have big old drink holders. We have a six speed auto with a manual mode and sport mode and here's our terrain response down here we have our air suspension settings here we have access mode we have normal mode and then we've got off-road mode which uh, is an extended height that gives the vehicle about two to three inch lift and here's our high range and low range shifter right here right now we're just in street mode but we do have uh, snow we have mud and ruts, we have desert, and we have rock crawl in there as well. Um, this is all wheel drive full time. We also have a bad front wheel bearing and the sunroof drains are uh, not connected to the outside. They are leaky on the inside. So there's a bit, the floors are pretty wet right now. I'm trying to dry those out. And I ordered some parts to fix the sunroof drains. This car's uh, like 15, 16 years old now, and uh, does does obviously have a few issues. Anyway, let's go take a look on the outside. She's a little muddy from uh, messing around with it this weekend. We got a lot of snow, and I tried to go out to the desert and then got scared with it, driving through a little bit of mud and gave up. <laughs> but this is a seven-seater as well in really good shape other than it's just dirty on the outside it's got 19 inch wheels which are stupid 
but if you don't care about doing some major off-roading, it'll work just fine. So there you go. That's our base model truck on the outside. So this is normal, normal uh, suspension mode, normal height. Let's put it in off-road height. All you gotta do is come in here, hit this guy. It will tell you that it's going in suspension off-road height. We gotta close the door so it will go up. But there you go, you can see it rising right now. So that's off-road height. Okay, here comes access mode. See it coming down. Front ends all the way down. There you go. Access mode, low rider mode. We're doing our first major repair on the LR3 right now. This is the uh, <clears throat> new air strut. Got the old one out already. Only takes about 10 minutes if you know what you're doing. You got the right tools, easy. So there's 130 bucks right there. There's our old one, rusty, crusty. I'm not gonna show you how to put this in, but this will make it almost perfect. And then I've got a wheel bearing coming. We'll see how this does after I get the uh, air strut in. All right, we got our air strut in. There's $130 to the price. Next thing we got right here is our wheel and bearing. Wheel bearing. So to do that, we gotta take off our axle nut. We gotta take off this wheel spacer. We gotta take off our brake caliper, and then we gotta take off our rotor. And then there's four bolts that hold the uh, bearing on the back. And then our $750 Land Rover is gonna be mostly in mechanically good condition. I also changed the oil the other day, put some uh, Rotella T6 in it. That's a 5W40, a little bit thicker. So check the air filter, it was fine. Other things I'll probably do is uh, drain the transmission fluid and refill it. Right, going in deep here. Crank position sensor buried back in there. All this crap you have to do just to get it out. All these parts. Thanks, Land Rover. All right, just driving around town today. This is about a 40 mile an hour speed zone. Boom. You can hear. There's like hardly any road noise now that I fixed that wheel bearing. It is a crappy day outside though. It's March and man, we are still getting snow here in Utah. So I'm not even like loud. When I test drove that um, Ford Bronco, a lot of little Ford Bronco boys got mad about it, but it was loud inside. It was insane. This thing, you barely hear anything. It's so quiet. Let's uh, get this out on the highway and let's hear how nice it is inside. Okay, here we go. We're just gonna do a quick little get on the highway type of thing. We're starting around 15 miles an hour. We're in sport mode on the transmission. And there's about 75. So, nothing too exciting or fast, but you know, Good enough. Good enough for a run around. It's got enough power with the V6. The V8's a little bit nicer, but you lose about a mile per gallon. Some people care, some people don't. Right. After a few weeks of messing with the uh, Land Rover LR3, it's in pretty good running condition. So let's go over some of the costs to fix this thing up to get road worthy enough for me. The tires. They're okay, they're about 50% still, so I'm fine with that. We bought a air, air shock for the front. That was $132. I'm leaving out tax, though, because your tax will vary wherever you live. We also put a um, crank position sensor on it. That was $25 off of Amazon as well. And then I bought a, like a hose 
like a air shock repair kit that was like 30 bucks and what else have we done oh i did put in a car play screen that just hooks into the auxiliary port on this i buried all my wires so you can't seal them because i don't like wires hanging out I'm trying to think if there's anything else i had to do to it there's one other thing i had to buy for it oh front wheel bearing 55 bucks so 132 for the uh air shock 55 for the front wheel bearing 25 bucks for the crank position sensor and then a serpentine belt uh was like 25 bucks and then the battery was 220 dollars. so we'll add all that up here and i only paid 750 bucks for the vehicle let's take a look at it Welcome back to the LR3. This is a few weeks later from the last time I recorded. I'm finally ready to put together a conclusion of this video. So, so how's the vehicle been running? I've put 1,721 miles on it so far in about three weeks. Other than that, it's been pretty problem free. I think I probably need to do a transmission service or just check the level on it. I just haven't gotten around to it yet because I want to put it up on the lift and just check everything else out, check all the fluids. I also have a front pinion seal that's leaking in the front diff, so I need to fix that at some point. I don't think that would be too expensive. Probably 20 bucks for the seal or less. Anyway, the vehicle's been rock solid. I've been driving it everywhere for my daily, just, just a beater. I've taken it off-road a little bit, just some dirt roads nothing too crazy and some mud um, I will say 19 inch wheels are not my favorite and when I went through all that mud it collected in the insides of the wheels you know like spin yeah you know, the outside inside is not me not where the rubber goes but on the opposite side I don't know the side that faces the brakes how's that sound okay anyway collected some mud in there so when I'm going over 6570 at uh is a little out of balance, so I need to take the wheels off and clean them. Um, other than that, the suspension's in great shape, the inside's in good shape. We got CarPlay connected into the auxiliary system, which is nice. I hate replacing stereos. If I don't, if I don't have to, I won't do it. So it does work. The V6 is powerful enough. So I'd say I'm overall pleased with this vehicle. Would I have paid more than I did for this vehicle just to buy it and have it and keep it? No, not in my opinion. I would probably pass on anything like this unless it was under two grand. Just because I know their history. I know the parts that go wrong on them. And to me, I'd rather just buy something cheap that doesn't have all the air suspension problems or... You know, just mechanical, electrical difficulties that these things generally have. LR3s are pretty solid for a Land Rover. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. You know, if you're looking for a cheap off-roader, really the LR3 is pretty good. Just get one that's been well-maintained. Or if you're going to buy one that's not well-maintained, make sure you get it cheap. The terrain select on these things is rad. The... Uh, Air suspension, the different levels you can set it at are awesome. You've got, the things are pretty easy to modify. Parts are cheap. Get one, drive it till it dies, and then buy another one. Stay with, get an LR3. They're cheaper to maintain and uh, cheap to buy right now. Do it before they get up there. The, the old discos, like the D1s and the D2s are shooting up in value. Get one of these, keep it. They will go up in value. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Make sure that you uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.